Now that you have a better understanding of how we first teach children to count to 10, we need to talk about how do we go further from 10, right? Let's take a look at the Common Core State Standards again. These are coming from kindergarten, number and operations in base 10. And uh, you will see that I've got up here, work with numbers 11 to 19 to gain foundation for place value. Notice these first beginning vocabulary terms. Compose and decompose numbers from 11 to 19 into 10 ones and some further ones. And you're gonna do this by using objects, drawings, and record each composition or decom decomposition by a drawing or an equation. Understand that these numbers are composed of 10 ones and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, or nine ones. So let's first reflect on where have we heard the words compose or decompose before? Take a minute just to think about that. I mean, I've heard of composing something like get your composure or gain your composure, right? It means to like put yourself back together. Um, or that Mozart composed music, right? He made it, he created it, he put it together. Um, when I think of decomposing, I'm thinking of uh, that the body is decomposing in the ground or the trash is decomposing in the landfill. So it means to break apart. So I want to remember this as I talk about these terms in mathematics. Composing, we're talking about putting things together. Decomposing, we're talking about breaking them apart. When we talk about composing, we use this a lot when we think about combinations to 10. Think for a moment, what would all the combinations to 10 be? I'd like you to list those out. You might have a list that looks something like this. Zero and 10, one and nine, two and eight, three and seven, and four and six. If this is all you have though, you're missing some, don't forget we can go the other direction. So we could have six plus four, we could have seven plus three, we could have eight plus two, nine plus one, and 10 plus zero. Depending on the contextual situation, these could be different combinations. Now I want you to think about why would combinations to 10 be so important? Who cares if they understand all the different ways that we can make 10? Why do you think that might be? If you think about it, since we live in base 10 world, combinations to 10 are actually very helpful. Let me give you an example. If I know that three plus seven is 10, I also know that 30 plus 70 is 100. I also know that 300 plus 700 is 1,000. I also know that 30,000 plus 70,000 is 100,000. You get the gist. Once I know these combinations to 10, because I live in a base 10 world, suddenly I know a lot more facts than just my combinations to 10. I know combinations to 100, 1,000, and so on, even as the numbers get really big. Now let's talk about decomposing. When we think about decomposing, we're breaking a number into some parts. It could be two, it could be more than two, so that when I combine those parts together, I get back to my original number. Many times when we think about composing and decomposing numbers, we use a strategy called number bonds, and it looks something like this. I could do a number bond for the number 10, and I show that I can break this into two groups, and it would be five and five. That's what a number bond looks like. Likewise, and that's, by the way, thinking about a number bond in terms of decomposition, if I'm thinking about composing a number bond, I can actually go like this. If I have four and three, then what number can I compose? I could make seven. So we use number bonds a lot with children to help them break apart numbers. We sometimes use that, that terminology as well. Now you've got a better understanding of how we use the words composing and decomposing in mathematics and where you might see those in your kindergarten or first grade future classroom.